Should you pay an extra $1,000 for the Cintiq Pro 16 or is the regular Cintiq 16 good enough? I'm an animator. I work on these things every single day and hopefully I can help you pick between these two tablets. It's not an easy decision because they're both really good tablets. So let's start with the basics. The Cintiq 16 costs $650 while the Pro is almost $1,000 more at $1,500. The size of the displays are almost exactly the same. The big difference here is the resolution. The Cintiq 16 screen is 1080p while the Pro can go up to 4K. Some people might think that 4K is overkill on a 16 inch monitor, but keep in mind that a Cintiq is usually a lot closer to your eyes than a normal monitor. I find that the difference in resolution is actually quite noticeable, especially with small details or text. The Pro screen is a little bit brighter than the regular Cintiq 16, and it can also display a wider range of colors. The trade-off for this brighter, higher resolution display is that it gets a little bit warm and it requires a fan. Let's talk about what it feels like to draw on both of these tablets, starting with Parallax. Parallax can make it feel like you're not drawing directly on the screen, which is technically true because you're really drawing on the glass panel above the digitizer. Wacom software lets you calibrate your Cintiq to minimize parallax, but anytime you change your viewing angle, for example, if I move the Cintiq or if I change the height of my standing desk, I'll probably need to recalibrate. But if you really don't like parallax, the Cintiq Pro 16 has a lot less of it. I might move the Cintiq Pro 16 a few times a day when I'm using it, but I haven't really felt the need to recalibrate. In fact, the only time I calibrated the Cintiq Pro 16 is when I first got it and there was so little parallax in the first place that I couldn't really tell the difference. Honestly though, parallax isn't as big of a deal as you may think. I spent many years working on different Cintiqs with different levels of parallax, and speaking from experience, it's something you can get used to fairly quickly. Besides the parallax, the drawing experience on both tablets is very similar. They both come with Wacom's Pro Pen 2 and have the same levels of pressure and tilt sensitivity. Both Cintiqs also have giant bezels, which is great for drawing and animation because the pen won't accidentally slip off the edges and it's a natural place to rest your hands. To power the Cintiq 16 and connect it to your computer, you need an HDMI port for the display, a USB port to register pen strokes, and a power brick connected to a power outlet. These three cables are connected to Wacom's 3-in-1 cable, which then connects to the Cintiq. This kind of cable management nightmare is pretty typical of all the Cintiqs I've used in the past. The Cintiq Pro 16 has made this a little bit better by using USB-C. You still need a power brick, but it's smaller and connects directly to the tablet via a USB-C cable. If your computer has a USB-C port, a second USB-C cable will connect the display and receive pen strokes. But if you don't have a USB-C port, the Cintiq Pro 16 also includes a standard USB-A to micro USB cable, a mini display port cable, and the Wacom Link Plus. And since we're talking about cables and ports, I'll quickly mention that the Cintiq Pro 16 has a built-in SD card reader and a 3.5mm audio jack. It also has an extra USB-C port, but this only supplies up to 5 watts of power, so it's limited to charging low-power USB-C devices. The regular Cintiq 16, on the other hand, does not have any extra ports. Besides the cables I mentioned, both tablets come with a Pro Pen 2 and accessories like a pen holder, additional color rings, replacement nibs, and a cleaning cloth. The Cintiq Pro 16 also comes with a standalone pen stand, but only the regular Cintiq 16 comes with a set of international travel adapters. That's enough about cables and plugs, let's talk about drawing again. I've mentioned in some of my other videos that the Cintiqs are not the most ergonomic tablets to draw on. The Cintiq screen means you're usually hunched over and looking down. Both the Cintiq 16 and the Pro have these little flip-out legs that lift the tablet slightly, but it's not nearly enough. To fix this, there are two things to address, height and angle. Ideally, I want to have my Cintiq in front of me at eye level, like an artist drawing on his easel. There's really only one option for the Cintiq Pro 16, this specific stand from Wacom. This stand lets you choose between three angles, but even at the steepest angle, I still needed to slide a thick book underneath the stand to get the tilt closer to my liking. For height, I've used the secret pro technique of putting the Cintiq on a box. Heavy boxes or boxes with rubber feet work the best because you don't want your Cintiq sliding around while you're drawing. Moving on to the regular Cintiq 16, we've got a lot more options to work with here. 
To start off, you can already choose between two stands from Wacom. This one lets you use your Cintiq vertically, and the other is similar to the Pro stand, but way better. There are a lot more angles to choose from, and you can go all the way up to almost 90 degrees. Adjusting the tilt is also really simple. Just reach behind the Cintiq and pull to release the lock, and then set it to whatever angle you want. As before, we can put the Cintiq 16 on a box to get it closer to eye level. However, this is where the Cintiq 16 sets itself apart. The Cintiq 16 has a 75mm visa mount. This means you can mount it to 75mm visa accessories like a desk stand or a monitor arm. To me, this is a major selling point because my biggest issue with the Cintiqs have always been bad ergonomics and adding a visa mount is just such a good solution. Check out my video on how to use the Cintiq 16's visa mount if you want to learn more. I've rambled on about how much better the Cintiq 16's mounting options are, but there's one thing I like about the Cintiq Pro 16 stand. It's small, it's light, and it falls flat when you're not using it. All things considered, the Cintiq Pro 16 is smaller, lighter, and thinner. That said, if I need to carry a tablet around, I'd still go for something without a screen, like the Intuos Pro. Even though the Cintiq 16 and the Cintiq Pro 16 both feel well-built and solid, it's still essentially a large piece of glass. We've covered most of the important features now, but there's still a few things to mention before we can come to a definitive conclusion. Both Cintiqs have a physical on-off button, but only the Pro can be used as a touchscreen. While it has improved compared to the older Cintiqs, Raycom's touch feature is still not the best especially when it comes to palm rejection, and that's not something you want to deal with while you're drawing. I keep touch turned off almost all the time because the bad palm rejection means that my palm is pressing random buttons while I'm drawing, which is so annoying. But remember, this is just my experience, so it's subjective. I'm sure there's someone out there who loves the Cintiq's touchscreen, <laughs> and it's probably also a masochist. At the top of the Cintiq Pro 16, you can see a row of touch sensitive buttons. You can turn multi-touch on or off, adjust the display or tablet settings, pull up an on-screen keyboard, or turn on tablet mode, which lets you use the Cintiq Pro 16 like an Intuos. If you want to add physical buttons, both the Cintiq 16 and the Pro are compatible with Wacom's Express Key remote. So, which Cintiq is right for you? Right off the bat, let me just say that I think the regular Cintiq 16 is good enough in most cases including professional work. Unless you're doing extremely detailed work or you need the most accurate color, the nice display on the Cintiq Pro 16 is really just a quality of life upgrade. If you're a hobbyist or a beginner, it might not be worth the extra thousand dollars, but if you're like me and you spend most of your day sitting in front of the Cintiq, the better display and the reduced cable clutter because of USB-C becomes very appealing. However, the Cintiq 16 becomes much more attractive if you're serious about ergonomics. As we mentioned earlier in the video, its visa mount lets you use the Cintiq in basically any position. Pair that with a standing desk and you've got a pretty ergonomic setup. If you absolutely must have a 4K display, but you also really, really, really want good ergonomics, you have to check out the larger Cintiq Pros, like the 24 or 32 inch. These can both be visa mounted, but they're gonna cost you. We also talked about portability in this video, but the fact remains that both the Cintiq 16 and the Cintiq Pro 16 are not really meant to be portable. If you travel a lot, you might want to consider a tablet like the Intuos Pro instead. I've already made a video comparing the Cintiq 16 and the Intuos Pro, so you can go check that out if you are interested. And I think that's it. I've left links to all the products in the description below, and it really helps me out if you use those links when you're planning on buying something. It doesn't cost you extra, and it sends a little bit of money my way, which helps me pay rent, buy food, maybe get something else to review. I just saw my neighbor come out, so I got distracted. What was I gonna say? Thanks for watching. I think that was it. Goodbye.